Hey, YouTube family. How are you guys doing? Hope you're all doing well. So just getting up from a, a late night gig. And it's Saturday morning and there's a box on my step. So I can start my groove guitar mods. So I was checking some stuff out, but let me show you uh, more weird stuff that I found. I'm gonna take you into the junk room <laughs> of my basement. Because uh, I want to show you the neck. So don't mind the background. <laughs> anyway, uh, so while I was waiting for my parts, I decided to do a little bit of work on the neck. So I totally sanded it. I even got rid of the groove headstock sticker or whatever you want to call it. It's It was just kind of painted on anyway. I, I don't know two swipes of sandpaper and it came right off. So what I did is I sanded the whole back of the neck and that's just, uh, it looks like a dent over here, but it's not, it's actually a bird's eye. It's like a, you know, like bird's eye maple. It's uh, really smooth to the touch, but it, you swear it looks like I dropped a screwdriver on it or something. <laughs> Basically, I sanded the neck down with uh, 300 grit sandpaper. It, it, it was rough, like it really, it needed a lot of work on the back. And then I sanded it down with 800 grit. And once I got it nice and smooth, took some tongue oil and I gave it three coats, three coats of tongue oil. So it's ready to go. I did the front as well, because I got to do the frets anyway. So, you know, I, I sanded the front right over the frets. <laughs> I messed them all up. They were all gritty anyway. I'll put some tongue oil on there and as well. So, you know, it came out really nice. Like the grain is super nice on this. So there's still, it's, it's a hard call. Like I know my first video was saying how, you know, the guitar was really rough, but it's not bad. Like this neck will be nice. I think once it's done. So now I, I'm going to take a thousand grit sandpaper and I'm going to go over everything, make it nice and smooth, and then just put some like lemon oil on it. You know, just an oil treatment. And uh, this will be like silky smooth. It, I think it'll turn out nice. It'll be perfect. Now, I still haven't fixed those messed up holes. Like they're all off centered, like as far as the neck heel goes. That's the next thing. I'm going to drill those out, plug them and let them dry properly. And then I'll re-drill them. Uh, once I fill the ones in the body and redrill those as well. That's that. Now, if we come over here. So I got all my parts this morning, which is cool. So I got the bridge. The bridge is kind of just sitting there. I just wanted to see if it would fit. So I got the black bridge. Um, now all the stuff came in. I got my black, black pickguard screws, black strap buttons, 250K pots, pre-slotted self-lubricating graph tech tusk nut, whatever they call them. I got my tuners, my Music Lily black locking tuners, black control plate, two pickguards. I got this black, uh, just regular tele pickguard. And then I got this black, um, you know, humbucker pickguard. So, and the white one is the original pickguard. And uh, what else did we get in here? I got, oh, I got my black knobs, black uh, string through uh, plate for the rear of the guitar. Cause I think I'm going to drill it and I'm going to add the option to do a string through body. And I got, and this, I just assembled. I had this black, um, this black plate, but unfortunately the pure tone jacks, they don't come in black. So anyway, it is what it is. And uh, yeah, then, I was just, you know, sizing up some stuff, seeing how everything fit. <laughs> and check this out. If I take this and put this on the guitar, look, these holes line up almost perfectly. So, you know, like all the holes line up, that one lines up, that one lines up. Oh, it's there. Uh, I'm just trying to hold it. Yeah, there you go. That one lines up. So it's all, it's pretty close. It's pretty close, but then, right? So I can put like a PNID humbucker in there, but then look at this, look. <laughs> so this, this pick guard is way shorter than 
whatever the heck they put on it. So, <laughs> so then I thought, oh, Music Lily, you messed up, right? You, you totally messed up. But then I took this pick guard and I brought it over here. And if I take this, this is my uh, Telecaster that I got from Two Bike Mike. So if I, and this is a, like a Lix Pro, like cheap, super cheap telly that you can buy off Amazon. So if I take this, here, let me just uh, turn it out a bit. If I take this, you know, that's the pick guard that, that, you know, Mike modded or whatever. If I size this one up, it's, it's exactly the same. See how that just lines up perfectly? It fits. If I take my Musi telly, line that up. That's a perfect fit as well. Look at that. It lines up perfectly. Right? Even if I go to my totally modded uh, telly, I call it my Wolfcaster because it's kind of a Wolfgang body, as you can see there. Even that would fit. I mean, if it was the same style, but you can see where the control plate is, that it, right, it would go over there. I don't know, it's a little dark in here. Maybe you guys can't really see that, but, you know, it would fit around the neck pocket and assuming, you know, this horn was longer, assuming this horn was longer, it would, it would all fit. I assume that these companies that make these budget guitars, you know, when they have their meeting and they decide to make a copy of the most copied guitar in history, I would assume that the best way to go about it would be to buy a Telecaster, buy one, right? Get all your specs off of it, punch it into your computer, and then you make perfect copies of it, and then you can put your own spin on it if you want, right? Like the way you paint it, body contours, no body contours, whatever. But as far as pick guards go, you know, four hole mount bridges, um, neck pocket sizes, uh, routes, there's no reason why that stuff should be off. There's none. Like, it's just so easy to make. And the Telecaster is the easiest guitar to replicate. Like, the easiest. How do you mess that up? So, check this out. So, this pickguard, if you look at it, it looks pretty normal. Remember in the last video I said, all the holes look like they're in the right place, except for this one. This cockeyed one, it's like away from the bottom corner. See how it's elevated compared to these? It kind of goes in a slant. Well, this hole, this bottom one, actually is in the right place. <laughs> this hole is where it's supposed to be. Check. So if I put this on here, and I line all the holes up, okay? And then I take this regular pick guard that fits every other budget telly out there, right? And I put this on here, like so. I line up the holes. Look at that bottom one. That one lines up. So this hole, this hole on the white pickguard is actually where it's supposed to be. So look at this pickguard. It's almost half to five eighths of an inch bigger at the bottom than a regular size pickguard. So that means that this, this thing is way further back than it's supposed to be. And so is this route as well, right? So this pickguard, or no aftermarket pickguard is gonna work on this body. So if you guys are buying a groove guitar, to kind of mod, uh, <laughs> good luck finding a pickguard, unless you can contact groove directly and order the color of pickguard that you want. But this, why, how, why would you do that? I, it just doesn't make sense. You know, like, I just try to picture these people around the table saying, hey, let's make our telecopy, like, totally off spec. Let's, like, just mess up everything so that, like, nobody can copy it because our guitars are so awesome. Uh, yeah, no. <laughs> just make it all to spec. Put your own twist on it because guitar players are looking... For budget friendly versions of the ripoffs that Fender's putting out. And sorry that's a little harsh, but I'm talking price wise for what you get. It's ridiculous. So if we can get a nice, affordable, budget model of a telly, most of us, other than the purists, most of us don't care what name is on the headstock, 
so long as it's well built, it's up to snuff, and I can order any parts I want, and they're going to fit. And clearly, these guys are not playing the game. <laughs> so, so I'll be able to fix it, but what I'm going to have to do, um, like I'm not changing all the routes and filling all the routes and then rerouting and then moving everything up just to fix this pick guard. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reuse the white pick guard and I'm just going to take it to an automotive shop and I'm going to have it wrapped in black. Um, and then I'm going to superimpose this one on that one to cut out the humbucker route. So uh, that's the only way around it. And, and that way I won't have to redrill the holes and I already know that pocket route fits. So, cause there were no neck issues anyway. That's kind of annoying, but at least I won't have to uh, do any more work. So that's where I am right now. So I'm just gonna go ahead and I kind of semi mounted this bridge plate. Uh, it sort of fits this, the screw holes are not quite centered. Well, like the screw heads are a little bit cockeyed, but it's not gonna matter because you won't really see it once the strings go through here. And uh, because this is so far back, these, to intonate, these are gonna be way far forward. So I'm not gonna have to worry about these saddles hitting these screws by having to pull them back. So that's where we are right now. As far as I know, everything else fits, but I'll let you know once I have a look. All right, so these uh, Music Lily tuners are great. I just finished the neck, I did a fret level and a crown and polish. And these frets look uh, really good. But they were very inconsistent all the way up. There was some major high ones. I had to level like sand for a long time. <laughs> That's crazy. I was just installing these tuners and they line up perfectly. So, you know, it's weird how they would go totally off on the body routes and go out of their way to make a bigger pick guard, you know, to, to try to make it fit. But and then again, on other things, they'll use, you know, it just bang on. Like everything fits, everything lines up perfectly. So these Music Lily tuners are fantastic. You know how the other ones, you know, I took off, this was like a gear shift. It would move back and forth. Well, these Music Lily ones, there's no movement at all. Like this shaft is super tight. It's nice and solid right from within the, the, the gears. The only thing that I do is I pull off the wheel. And some of these don't come off. I don't know if they're flared at the top, but they will not come out. But the Music Lily ones, they come out and just take some synthetic gear grease you can get it at canadian tire if you're in canada and in the us i'm sure uh, this permatech stuff is available everywhere if i can do this so you can see it and just lubricate so the only thing i find with these music lily tuners is that they come dry there might be a little bit of uh, some kind of oil that they put in there, you know, just before they, after they assemble them, before they ship them out, but it just won't last. So if you want them nice and smooth, uh, put some grease on them and then just put this back on. And don't make a big mess in there, obviously. And then I just grab the tuner, you know, hold it by the base and just crank it. And you'll feel it get nice and smooth. Like there's no resistance at all. And there's no slop on these Music Lily tuners. And for like a $25 set of tuners, <laughs> that's, that's unreal. So yeah, that's it. And then pop these in, 10 millimeter socket. Give a little tweak. I just make sure that it's seated and that it's not loose. And that's it. Tuners are in. So there you go. They're great. I just need to polish them up a bit. All right, so the neck is coming. Not 100% ready yet, but next thing to do is remove this nut and install the GraphTech one. All right, guys. So the work continues on this thing. Uh, so I plug the holes, use quarter inch dowels, drill these out and uh, tap them in. So you can see the glue seeped out from underneath and from inside, but more so from the inside. Uh, on the other side, I have them flush. I'll show you that in a second. 
And over here, you'll see uh, next to the bridge mounting screws, I have string through body holes now. And if I turn the guitar around, ta-da! So there's my string through body hole plate that went on perfectly. So basically what you do is you, you just put a piece of tape back here, drill it from the front side, right? I put my bridge in place. You see the bridge is all full of dust because I just finished doing it. Mounted the bridge in place. And then I used a drill press and drill these holes from the front side, from here, right? Drill these holes that way. And then on the other side, once the holes are drilled through, right? I widen each individual one. Then I just use a Dremel with uh, this attachment on it. You know, it's kind of like a, a, a cutting bit. Um, and I just basically, I route out a square channel around the holes. Uh, you know, I tape off the guitar and, uh, and that, that works out great. So it's nice and flush. And now I have the option of string through or top load. And then I plug the holes in the neck over here and I had a slight issue because when I pressed in this dowel you got to tap it in um, I got a small crack right here because it's so close to the side right like when they drill these out look how much space is over here and look how little space is over here so it kind of split right over here but I had so much glue inside the hole here that it kind of creaked out all along this crack on the inside so I was able to just take a clamp, press the heel together, and thank goodness it didn't touch the fretboard. So the fretboard is still perfectly fine. There's no issues on the fretboard at all. So I'm just kind of letting that sit for the next 24 hours, get rid of all the residue of the glue around the holes. Uh, same thing with the neck pocket of the body, and then uh, match the two together and kind of line up the holes and decide where that new neck plate is going to go. So it's coming, but it's, uh, it's slow. I wish these bodies were just a little more precise in their manufacturing. But anyway, on to the next thing, which will be shielding the body cavities. All right, well, there you have it. All shielded. So a little overlap over here. So when the bridge sits down, I'm going to sand some of the black paint off the bottom of the bridge so the bridge will make contact with this that way i only have to run a ground wire from the bottom of the volume pot to any uh any surface of the shielding tape because there's a yellow wire that connects this cavity to this cavity all in there and then there's a black wire which you can't see anyway it connects this cavity to this cavity. So all these cavities are all connected. So that's done. We're still waiting on that to dry. Still waiting on those to dry. So that's it for tonight. We're going to let that sit and I'll check in with you later.